the market opened in an absolutely free fall, and uh, some people couldn't even get any bids for their shares, and it was wild panic. And uh, an ugly crowd gathered outside the stock exchange, and uh, it was described as making uh, weird and threatening noises. It was indeed uh, one of the worst days that had ever been seen down there. There was a glimmer of hope on Black Thursday. Directly across from the New York Stock Exchange was a low, stately building, the House of Morgan. 22 years earlier, J. Pierpont Morgan had stopped the panic of 1907. October 24th, high noon. All eyes were now on acting head Thomas W. Lamont. Tom Lamont called uh, a number of the other bankers, like Charles Mitchell of uh, the National City Bank and uh, uh, people from the Bankers Trust and uh, the J. Albert Wigan of the Chase Bank and so forth. There were about a half a dozen of them there. And they were gathered together to really discuss uh, what they could do to uh, stem this uh, tremendous onslaught of uh, selling stocks on the stock exchange that was taking place. About 12.30, there was an announcement that uh, this group of bankers would make uh, uh, available a very substantial sum uh, to uh, ease the uh, credit stringency and support the market. And uh, right after that, Dick Whitney made his famous walk across the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Richard Whitney, vice president of the exchange, was chosen by the bankers to be their representative. At 1.30 in the afternoon, at the height of the panic, he strode across the floor and in a loud, clear voice ordered 10,000 shares of U.S. steel at a price considerably higher than the last bid. He then went from post to post shouting buy orders for key stocks. Stood up on one of the seats at the post. And he said, I give it 45 for 50,000 standard oil. And everybody started to pull a the, the crash is over. His Morgan's putting his money in. Maybe the crash is over. And sure enough, uh, there seemed to be evidence that the bankers had moved in to end the panic. And it, they did end it for that day, the market. Uh, stabilized and even went up. The New York Times uh, uh, said that thanks to the formation of this bankers pool, they've uh, most uh, observers felt that the panic and the great sell-off was over. And uh, most people did feel that way. Tom Lamont felt that way. But uh, Monday was not good. Apparently people had uh, uh, thought about things over the uh, weekend over Sunday and decided maybe they might might be safer to get out. And then came uh, the real crash, which was on Tuesday, uh, when the market went down and down and down uh, uh, without seeming limit. October 29th. Morgan's bankers could no longer stem the tide. It was like trying to stop Niagara Falls. Everyone wanted to sell. AT&T down 50%. RCA wants $110 a share. Couldn't find buyers at 26. Blue Ridge 100 plunged to $3 and still no buyers. On the floor, they had never seen anything like it. Oh. And it was just like a nightmare. <laughs> and... I couldn't believe what was going on. In those days, every buy order was on a black pad, and every sell order was on a, a, a red pad. And all I saw was members running around with a fistful of red orders, just like chickens with their head cut off. They didn't know which way to run. 